I'm with uh, Petromall, amongst many other things I do, and uh, one of the things that we'd like to see is that uh, we get back to doing some of the basic science and engineering, particularly as it applies to the oil and gas industry. Uh, I've seen a lot of examples, I'm not sure many of you have, where that hasn't been the case, and uh, as a matter of fact, today in Davos, there's a talk on why our industry has major project disasters, and I think we heard about that uh, a couple of sessions ago here. IPA talked about how we overpromise and underdeliver almost every case on a major project, and I think that's no doubt the case in the North Sea as well. Uh, we have an interesting group of speakers who are going to cover a range of issues. Uh, we shouldn't forget that Norway is part of Northwest Europe and also probably an even larger <coughs> producer than, uh, than the UK nowadays. And they've gone uh, down a slightly different road than the UK has in terms of how they ensure they have a vibrant industry. Both David and I have worked in Norway and have some different experiences there, better and for worse in some cases. So maybe we've got a chance to talk about that today. Uh, I suppose one of the things that uh, is a backdrop to all of this is that you know, the industry is not really making enough money. And the North Sea has often been an area where a lot of experimentation and new, we call them techniques, and sometimes new technology has been developed and then deployed in the rest of the world. And I suppose the other test bed for offshore developments has been in the Gulf of Mexico. Two very different ways of developing uh, assets. And uh, so we'll see which one uh, has a longer life and can generate better returns. But uh, it seems we have a lot to do here in the North Sea and in Northwest Europe if we're going to uh, continue to have a vibrant industry here. Um, there's been several reports. The Cullen Report has come out recently saying that you know, there needs to be better cooperation, need a, need a better regulator, uh, a stronger regulator. All of this, of course, I think is a sign that standards are increasing and that the expectations of all of us as operators and developers is increasing. And, by the very nature of that tends to increase costs, one would think. Uh, there isn't much enhanced recovery going on in the North Sea. Our, our fields are now declining very rapidly. I think uh, Oswald Clint is going to talk about a little bit, at least according to the title of his talk. And there's been very many fewer exploration wells and much lower volumes discovered in the past two, three years particularly, but there's been a significant downward trend in the past 10 years. So with the tiny amount of volumes being discovered, it's very likely that in two or three years there will be a significant drop in capital expenditure. And I'm sure the UK government will be screaming for more revenue. And we'll be saying, but we can't afford to pay you more revenue, so you know, where's all this going to lead? And then last but not least, at the end of every life, particularly offshore, we have to decommission these facilities. And if a small company is sitting on a facility that's coming to the end of its life, I can assure you that the last thing they want to do is commit a few hundred million, if not billions of pounds to decommission a, a major offshore structure. Never mind the fact that it might cost them two or three times as much as they thought it would. They'll run out of money, and it's going to come back out of the rest of the <coughs> operating companies in, in the sector. The government has done a reasonably good job of focusing their effort to reduce their take, if I can call it that, on to encourage like brownfield developments, heavy oil developments, west of Shetland developments. However, that's usually very short term and very few companies can, you, can predict when that will happen. And so if you have a marginal development, you know, if you have to go and lobby the government and it takes them three years to get the legislation through for you to get confidence that that's actually real, get your investors organized, you know, all these projects are going to be significantly delayed. So I would argue that there needs to be a wholesale change to the way the fiscal regime in the UK works, but very unlikely to happen. The government doesn't have enough money. We're already paying lots of taxes. So there's going to have to be kind of a complete rethink of the whole structure of the industry, I would argue. And then last but not least, I have a plea, I suppose, that throughout the discussion that we don't just listen and uh, take the information in and leave and don't do anything. I, for one, would like to have a much more vibrant discussion, even some disagreements. If you don't like something that's being said, you know, we can have a constructive discussion about what's the implication, what we can do, and hopefully you can take this back to your companies and do something about it. And last but not least, you know, we here are the industry in some form or other, and 
Some people, quite young people are here, that's a very good sign, but I know one person in particular is here, had his own cost, had to take a day of holiday to be here, which doesn't bode well for his company if, he's, if they're not able to train people and they're forcing people to take vacation to learn about what's going on in, in our business. So uh, that's a theme that underlies all of this, is the, the industry needs talent, uh, wages are going up because there's a shortage of people, drives up costs, you know, so this uh, background to everything in our industry is important for us to think about. <coughs>